keep on going under patience. Oh Allah, grant me peace. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Amma ba'd, fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytwani r-rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madhya Channel Welcome to our program Our Issues And today our topic is Drugs and Dealing So Drugs and also Dealing And before we talk regarding our topic Let's listen to a blessing of reciting salutation, peace and blessings upon the best of mankind, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam has said, Whoever recites Salat upon me ten times during the day and ten times during the night will attain my intercession on the day of judgment. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madhya Islam, just 10 times in the day and 10 times at night, look at what we will gain. We will gain the intercession of the beloved Prophet ﷺ. How long does it take to recite durood upon the Prophet ﷺ? Salutations, peace and blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ. Just 10 times in the day and 10 times in the night. Try to make this a habit. Recite durood, salutation, peace and blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ 10 times in the daytime. 10 times at night, inshallah. We will be able to gain the intercession of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment. So my dear Slime brothers and viewers of Madani channel, our topic today, drugs and dealing. And today we are going to be talking about some, some of the types of drugs and the effects of drugs and then also where it leads to and also drug dealing as well. So many people in our society are involved in taking drugs and there are so many people who are involved in drug dealings and how drugs dealing is destroying our society, our community, and to able to save ourselves from all this. Today, we've got Wasim Bai, inshallah, Zawajal. we covered the topics of uh, drugs, Wasim Bai, today, drugs and dealing. Where we left from last time, Wasim Bai, was that the pressure of people uh, around us and how people are going on to drugs. And then, let's, let's continue from that regarding drugs and where it leads to. We talked about that the, the issue of drugs that it, it, it led someone to able to take the life of his own mother. Why? Because she was stopping. Well, seen by these types of incidents are there in our society where people, if their parents are stopping that child from taking drugs, where is leading them to? Uh, what, what have we got to say on this? Uh, no doubt, um, Abdul Hanan Bay, in regards to drugs, you know, once a person becomes addicted, you know, he loses his respect, he loses everything because he just wants to fulfill his desire he just wants to fulfill this habit of smoking drugs and um in regards to this it's mentioned that there are many many incidents of people of how low they stooped just to fulfill their desire they, they never had the money because there are many times a person starts to because he's not active at that time then because he loses his senses because he's not 100 percent there what was is that Eventually he loses his job, he gets kicked out from his house, his parents don't want to speak to him, maybe even his children don't want to see him anymore. So he's kicked out and a person, even at times, we hear that a person takes his own life. You know, a person, he becomes addicted to drugs, you know, couldn't find the money, couldn't get this, couldn't get that. And then a person, he thinks, look, what's the point of living, mazallah, and let me just take my own life. There's many incidents like that in our society. Well, see, no doubt, I've seen that there's many houses uh, many homes, which can say many families, even the child is on drugs, the, the parents kick him out of the house. Why? They get fed up. He's stealing from their, or his own parents. They eventually get rid of him. And the, the pain the parents go through at that time was seen mm. by you know, a father, a mother can understand. They don't want to get rid of him, but they, the child has made it so hard for them that uh, they just have to get rid of him. Mm. And you know, Abdul Hamad, by four, I, mother and a father, to make a decision like that, Allah. To take the kids out from their house, it's a very difficult decision. And no doubt, you know, the child must have pressed all the buttons and like they have with drugs as well. And meaning the neighbors are watching, the family members are watching, the relatives are aware that look, their child is smoking drugs. And you know what, the parents don't just kick the child out like that. Mm. Remember, a mother's love, a father's love, they will always try their utmost best 
to explain to the child, look, you're my son, you're my child. Avoid your opinion to this world. Avoid your, but gave you a good upbringing. Please, they will try the utmost best and for them to then make a decision like that to kick out, it's a very difficult decision that has to be taken by the parents. Well, see, by, um, many parents, they they are coming to the brothers of Dawah Islami, they come to the sisters of Dawah Islami and they're saying, you know, my son is taking drugs, please give me some taweez, please give me something that I also make, please make dua for him. And you get, Alhamdulillah, parents are doing khatme ghosia in, in related to this. And this actually is showing that the, the, how even if the child becomes an addict to drugs, but the parents still have that in them, that they still want him back. They still have that hope in their heart that how somehow get him out of this. And, and this is something for the child also, was in mind to reflect over this. Look what my parents are going through. And look what they will be going through if I'm, if I'm addicted to drugs, if I'm taking drugs, or when, if eventually, if I get to that degree of drugs where I will lose the respect of everyone, what, what extent they will get to, that a child needs to be thinking this, Wasim, right? Definitely. And you know, there was one Mubalik of Dawat Islami, and um, Alhamdulillah, he, he prepared one beyond one speech about drugs. And you know, Alhamdulillah, Dawat Islami's Ishtabat is not just one place because there's so many gatherings. He was delivering a beyond one ishtima, then the next ishtima, then the next ishtima, then the next ishtima, same beyond about drugs. And the Mubalik says that every single gathering that I went to, to deliver that particular talk about drugs, at least one or two parents, one, two fathers would come to Allah. me that look, please help my child, please come and explain to my child. And exactly, you've just hit the nail on the head that look, this should show the child that look, my father is trying to bring the Mulvi Sahib, my father is trying to bring the local preacher, the local imam sahab to explain to me. You know, for a father to, ex to tell his own problems, mm. you know, um, in our society, you know, the family problems, we try to keep that under the table. Mm. We don't let that out. But for a father to tell someone else that problem, imagine how many buttons that child would have pushed for him to take that uh, step. And like you mentioned, that that child should understand then, Look at Imam Sahib's coming to me, Morbi Sahib's coming to me, the preacher's coming to me. I should see sense at this stage. See, by Amir Al-Sunnah Damat Barakat Muraliya, he, he mentions a, a very important thing here. And he says, you know, sometimes, and this is for the viewers of Madni Channel and those who are parents, they say that sometimes the, the parents or the father, he brings the child uh, and he, he, he takes him to someone, an Imam or someone, and he mm. will say, you know, please tell him, this, he's like this. In front of that child, they, they actually downgrade that child in front of, of other people as well. This is very mm. important that we don't degrade our, you know, if, if, we, if you're going to ask for dua to be made or, you know, you can indirectly or maybe taking that person aside, please explain to my son, he's going to come and meet you or he's going to like, to do it in that way. Is well. another, I've got another experience here. You know, uh, what happens is that a father comes to a mobile to a preacher that look, my child, for example, he doesn't read namaz, please explain to him. My child, look, he disrespects me, please explain to me. Now, a milad mehfil is kept, some sort of hatam is kept. Now, it's your opportunity to speak to that young lad, same age, and you try to speak to that young lad, that you know, try to make his mindset about namaz. So you've just started to introduce yourself, brother, what's your name, what do you do? As soon as you get that connection going, the father, the father will come, Acha Mulisa, this is my child, he doesn't read his namaz, meaning what you were trying to achieve, that long-term goal that you were trying to achieve, the father just comes and he destroys that. Allah. And this is definitely a lesson that we should give from our platform here today as well. Now look, if you've told the Mulvi Sahib, if you've told the preacher, a Mubalik of Dawat Islami, then look, make my child's mind safe to do this action, to leave this action. Let him fulfill that, inshallah. In front of that child, once you've let it off on your chest, let the preacher deal with it. Never say anything in front of that child to the preacher, inshallah. Amir Sunnat also says, you know, the, some, some people come and they say, please make dua for my child. He's like this, he's like this. And Amir Sunnat very beautifully says here, he says that, uh, you know, you can just say, please make dua for my son. You don't have to tell what problem that what he's involved in or the crime he's involved in Sorry. or the wrong action he's doing. Rather, re revealing that issue, just say, make dua. And inshallah, if the person who's going to be making dua, he's a person whose duas are being accepted, he will make dua, inshallah. Whatever that problem will be, inshallah, that will be removed as well. Sure. Wasim, by just going forward, um, you know, we talked about children um, taking drugs and how the reaction of parents is. The other issue is, you know, people who are taking drugs and then now they've grown up. Now their families have got them married. They've, they've gone into a marriage life now. And then, then people are still addicted to the drugs. Now they've got children as well. What happens is this is a breaking point as well also. 
the the wife of that husband or you know or the children of, of, of who see their father involved in that action sometimes what is they actually move away from the father or the wife moves away from her husband because she sees and I, I've seen these people have approached me in, in this way as well that you know so and so family member of ours you know the, 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 they're separated why because the husband is on drugs Definitely. and you know one mubalik one preacher he mentioned something that I know has stuck with me till today and that mubalik that preacher he mentioned that look do those actions that you want your children to do now, for example, you don't want your child to be smoking cigarettes. You stop smoking now, child. You, how would you like it if your child is smoking drugs? You won't like it. And remember, you are someone's child as well. Imagine how your parents are feeling when you are smoking drugs. If you don't want your children tomorrow to be drinking alcohol, then why are you drinking alcohol today? If you don't want them to be committing zina tomorrow, then why are you doing it today? So the Mughal League mentioned beautifully that look, whatever you want your children to be doing tomorrow, you set the example from now. Allah. If you set the example from now, inshallah, Azawajal, inshallah, Azawajal, your children will follow your footsteps as well, inshallah, Azawajal. Wasim Bhai, you know, last time in our episode, we mentioned regarding the, you know, a lot of people, why they're taking drugs is to ease off their mind. And it just come to my mind uh, when, I was, when we were talking about this was that, you know, some people say, oh, I'm, I'm saved from that problem. Or oh, I'm saved from this issue because he's relaxed his mind or he's moved away from that problem mentally because of taking drugs if, even if someone has moved away from the problem but he's only moved away from the problem related to this world someone who's taking drugs if he thinks that he's saved himself from problems what about the problems of the grave what about the problems of the hereafter the accountability he will have to give for taking drugs on the day of judgment or the, the lies which he has spoiled the giving the account for that on the day of judgment definitely of the Hanabi and you know, um, this is with anything. A person thinks that, look, you know, I might have to lie about this just to get a little bit of ease. But just remember, okay, you might get a little bit ease. You know, that problem, that difficulty might go away. You might go past that path successfully. But remember, every action you do on, in this world, you will answer on the day of judgment. And may Allah protect us. May Allah protect us from the azab because no one, there is no one at all that can face even the lightest punishment of Jahannam. And drugs, alcohol, dealing drugs, these are those actions that definitely give invitation to have a zab in the hereafter. I was thinking by, uh, one of the things with drugs is that what it leads to. Hmm. Uh, drugs, someone who's taking drugs leads to many ways. We will talk about the dealing side of drugs as well. But there's, what I've seen is the people who, who go onto drugs, eventually where they might end up is they either could be end up getting shot or they could be end up going into prison. Why? Because... Well, what happens is when a person starts to take drugs, he might have money at that time. But if, he's, if someone is addicted to drugs, there's a chance because of his attitudes, his behavior, his ways of being addicted to drugs, he can be taken off from his workplace. When he's taken off from his, and he's not able to get a job, what he is involved in, he's involved in stealing, involved in breaking into people's homes. Mm. And when someone is involved to fulfill his desire of, of drugs, taking drugs, able to fulfill his desire and buying these uh, things, He's involved in crime. And when he's involved in crime, where does it lead to? Eventually they get caught for seeing by. Definitely. It leads to many crimes. And we've seen this of the Hanalbai that, you know, breaking into people's homes, you know. And then also many incidents happen up in our society that, you know, people being shot, people being killed, people being murdered because, you know, they've done something whilst, you know, just to fulfill their desire. And it leads to major, major problems. And this is something that we should be refraining from, inshallah. Azawajal. And also, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, you've given ghusl to many youngsters. And sometimes we've, we've seen in the, in the past that what has, what's happened is why they were involved in car accidents. It's also, this is another thing, because of taking drugs, they were in that state of intoxication, or you say their the mind was some elsewhere, and involved them into that. This is one point that I would definitely like to mention on this platform here. That especially for the parents that are watching, you know, it's a Friday night, it's a Saturday night. A car comes at 10 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. Your 15, 16 year old child is leaving his house, not at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. He's leaving at 10 o'clock at night. A brand new car is coming and he's jumping into that car. Wow. Where do you think they're going? At this time of the night, on a Friday and Saturday, then not for one hour, not for two hours, coming back four or five o'clock in the morning. Allah. And Abdul Hanan, they seriously, there are so many incidents in our society that they jump into that car, 
the driver just shoots off the mother, the father are watching this car shoot down the road. And then what happens is, exactly. in the morning they get the news that look, Allah they were Allah. dealing drugs or they were doing drugs. You know, the driver, he had smoke. There were these incidents as well. They were smoking drugs and basically they were driving so quick, never had time to respond, crashed the car. And in the morning, the mother, the father that seen the child going to that car, they get a knock on the door that look, the child's passed away. Ali Islam, brothers and views of Madhi Chan. So just uh, something to ask for to reflect that if you are taking drugs, you're not just ruining your own life, but you're ruining the life of your family, your parents, your children. Keep away from these actions of drugs. Don't take it lightly. If you are smoking drugs, come off this habit. Get yourself off the habit of drugs because this will not just destroy you, it will destroy the life of your entire family. And just imagine what your parents will be going through if they find out that you were involved in a car accident, if you were involved in something due to drugs, what they will be feeling, although you would have left the world, but the pain which you would leave them. So before, uh, before doing these type of actions, uh, always reflect and think that what it could lead uh, your parents, your family members to go through after you, you leave the world. Well, see, by, let's, let's go on to uh, the other part of our topic, drug dealing now. We've, we've talked about drugs, we've now drug dealing. Drug dealing, is, it's, it's a big issue in our society. Many people are involved in this. First of all, what pe leads people towards drug dealing? Was in like? First of all, Abdul Nabi, I would just like to start with this point here. That these are those people, these are seriously those people that even the whole community shows anger to these people. Allah. These are those people that are polluting our society today. That, you know, destroying lives, you know, trying to make their life better and destroying other people's oh. lives. And you know, you mentioned that what causes a person to become a drug dealer. First, remember that a person has to smoke drugs to become a drug dealer. So those that are smoking drugs, this is the time to leave your ways because many things lead up to uh, this. The second point that I'd like to mention is that, unfortunately today, we are going through this identity crisis. That, you know, the youngsters who are growing up, who have started secondary school, going to college life, going through university life. You know, they see an actor, they see someone like that, and they'd be like, okay, let's make my hairstyle like him. Let me make my beard like him. Let me wear my clothes like him. Then what happens is that two months later, okay, this is my role model now. Five months later, okay, this is my role model now. And then what happens is that they are working hard. They are going through this whole effort of trying to get a good earning for themselves. But on the other hand, they see these people. All they do is just give a packet from out of the car, and that's if someone gives them about one grand, two grand like that. And that's if they're earning easy money. So these people then become role models for the youngsters that look, I'm working hard, I'm working 37 hours a week, I'm catching the bus, the train for two, three hours to get to my workplace, then two, three hours back. These people, all they do is go out for a few hours and they're earning double, triple, four times, five times than what I'm earning. So this becomes, these become role models for the youngsters of today. And this is what leads to that pattern. Yeah, it's, it's, I think people see it as easy, easy way of earning money. Easy money. You know, and the sad thing is, we're seeing by no one wants to struggle and to earn and get a livelihood. Everyone's looking for an easy way out. In one blink of the eye, I get this much money. And this, this, is, this is actually the whispers of shaitan. Shaitan is whispering people to go into this way, you know, to earn easy money and, you know, to have all their desires in front of them easily. But it was seen by, we all know where it leads to, uh, what, what actually happens with the, uh, the people who are drug dealing. Eventually, everyone gets caught. We, we haven't heard anyone who has got away with such big crimes or they've been dealing for such a, such a long time. They've got away. They're all either behind bars now Oh, they've been in, they've come out, they've gone in again. You know, this this is happening with drug dealers. And you know this point that you just mentioned here that, you know, they go, they, they always get caught. It's simple as that. But a drug dealer, you know what? The youngsters might be thinking, brother, look at their life. You know, they've got this big house now. Look at the car they're driving. My dad, look at his car. He's been working and look at this guy's car. Just remember one thing. A drug dealer will never be in school. A drug dealer will never have peace. Why? Because he knows he will get caught. He will be always in this constant fear that, okay, there's a police car going past, he's going to be thinking, oh, they come for me. Mm -hmm. Then he's going, he's going out somewhere, you know, the police car goes past his house, he'll be thinking, is that for me? You will see that a lot of the drug dealers, not everyone, and we shouldn't do this bad gomani, this negative thinking when we see CCTV cameras. But most of the times, a drug dealer will always have CCTV cameras outside his house because he always fears his life. Then not only with the police, the other side of it. 
Mm. We've got postcode rules. Postcode rules. My, this is my turf. This is my area. This is my area to deal. Someone else is coming to my area. That's it. I need to fly it back. And we've seen this, Abdul Mamba, many incidents in our area as well, and our society today as well. That, okay, someone came into my area. That's it. I've started on him. There was a fight. The guns came out. The knives came out. One got stabbed. And that's it. Life destroyed. Why? Because he was dealing in my area, and that's the idea to take some revenge. It's, it's a sad thing, was seen by how how it's lead to, you know, even drug dealers don't want people uh, in this in their society. So you know, everyone who wants to go into drug dealing, he has to find his own area, he has to find his own society, and then work in there. And you know how this system is working with. You. And for the views of Madni Channel, it's important that you know that this is what's happening in our society. People are going around. People are. And you, someone, sometimes it could be that you might be thinking, oh, it's not happening in my house. It's not affected in my house. But think about it. If the fire is lit in the neighbor's house, there is a chance that that fire might lead to your house. So if you are seeing these things happening in your society, if you are seeing that this is happening, then we need to work towards stopping this. And if this is happening in your own house, then you need to be thinking that you need to cause this to stop and make a mindset if your children are involved in drug dealing, don't just think that, okay, my child is bringing me money or he's giving me money. And sometimes Wasim Bhai, this is a fact. You know, the, the father, because he's getting a money, he's not worried about his child because turns, the son is bringing money home. It turns a blind eye. It turns a blind eye. It turns a blind eye. He, he could, sometimes these sort of parents, they know that the, my son is involved in something dodgy or is involved in something which is wrong. Because it's not easy for him to bring money this much amount and give it to me. Yeah, like, you know, this incidents in our society, the child he doesn't even wake up till 2 or 3 o'clock. He doesn't even go to work. But all of a sudden, the child is driving a better car than his father. You know, a child is earning no money at all. He's bought a property now. Definitely the parents should look that, you know, they shouldn't turn this blind eye. Because when your child gets, if your child gets shot, if your child gets stabbed, Remember, all these memories will come back to you that look, I turned a blind eye there. I should have taken some action. And we've seen this in our society. And Abdul Hamad, you know, finally, I would just like to give a message to the drug dealers. That you know, today, a drug dealer, just think to yourself, how would you like it if someone was giving drugs to your child, to your son, to your daughter, to your father, to your mother? You won't like it. First of all, you're going to punish your child. Then what are you doing? And then you'll go barging to that drug dealer. They look, what are you doing? What are you giving to my child? But just remember that that's one child of yours. Because of your evil habit of drug dealing, you are destroying not one, not ten, not twenty. You are destroying lives after lives after lives. Those parents went through various difficulties to bring their children up. Had dreams that my child is going to go to school, he's going to go to college, he's going to go to university. He's going to get a degree. He's going to get a good job. He's going to earn for us. You're destroying that. Destroying that. Why? Because you just want a little bit more money. But just remember that this money, there is no barakat in this money at all. There is no blessing. You know what drug dealers say of the Mumbai? They say, brother, okay, I'm earning this much money. Don't worry, I'll give some in the way of Allah. <laughs> I'll give some to the masjid, no problem. You earn haram money, you give it in the way of Allah, this will not be accepted. You spend it, there will be no blessings. You buying the best cars, you're buying big, big houses. What's the point if there's no blessing in your home? You and your missus are always fighting. Your children are not listening to you. What's the point? There's no blessing in the household. I see by some time what happens with these drug dealers, they get so much money. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things uh, un in related to one. The person who gets this much money coming in so easily, he gets a bit big headed. Uh, he doesn't, he, that person, his ways change, his attitudes change towards the people who loved him, the people who had respect for him, they, they move away from him. And then his, his ways are changing in the way that the, the people don't want to be around him as well. This is also another thing which you'll find that people who are drug dealing, that people want to move away from him because they have the fear, or they, they, there's a danger because of his attitude, his, his habits have all changed towards him. How unfortunate is that person? That a father is telling his child that, look, don't go spend your time with this person. Meaning how, how evil is that person that people are telling them, look, don't spend your time in that company. And a drug dealer should definitely think that, look, what am I doing with my life? You know, there was, there was one incident of the Haram I heard about. That there was a drug dealer. I remember what goes around will come. They will come back to you. And it was mentioned that there was one individual. And, you know, he was living that evil life, dealing, destroying people's lives. And basically, his mother passed away. He's gone to the graveyard to bury his mother. 
Whilst he's going, whilst he's following his mother's body into the graveyard, he's smoking a spliff at that time. And he says to the Imam Sab, the Imam Sab, look what I'm doing in my life. Look how disgusting I am. That even my mother is being buried. I'm such in this habit that I'm dealing drugs at this time and I'm smoking drugs at this time. So it's a point that should definitely be taken that what goes around comes around. A person would be punished not only in this world, definitely in the hereafter, he could be punished for taking drugs and dealing drugs as well. So Wasim, I just want to take this in, into a, another aspect. You know, a lot of the times, this money, what, what happens is when drug dealers, they start to get piling of money, they can't keep in an account. Why? They will get gun for money laundering. <laughs> Then this money is left in different places. For example, they could be left in their brother's house, their mother's house, their family's house. You know, different people's uh, family members, they leave money with them. Or oh, I've heard to the extent that money is being buried into, into, in their own gardens. There are some people who are drunk because they got that much coming in. They can't put it into account. They have to try to clear that money somehow till that time comes. They are snatching that money. And what's by the, what, what's the worst thing is, when, because there, there's people who are on their cases. The police is always on the cases of these type of people. And when they raid the houses or when they raid this one person's house, they don't just raid this one person's house. They raid the houses of all those people he's attached with. His, his family's house, his, his parents' house, his brother's house, his sister's house. And they raid these houses at one time. Their houses are raided. And then just imagine what's seen by when someone is raiding into the house of your family members of your parents house someone is raiding into the house of your sister your brother you know it's something for the drugs dealers to actually reflect over six o'clock seven o'clock in the morning meaning what condition will your parents your brother or your sister be in at that at the time you know drug dealers think that you know we are very smart you know we've got money coming in we've got this property how smart are you actually when the police are raiding into your sister's house, your mother's house, your brother's house, your father's house at 6 o'clock in the morning. And then not only just raiding and seeing them in that state, but then going through all their belongings. Allah. Imagine, you know, how sharp are you at that time? So definitely, you know, it's, it's a very evil action and a person should contemplate. And you talked about money, Abdul Hanan Bhai. A person, we mentioned this in the previous episode as well, you can hide all the money that you have from the police and from the law. But remember, Allah is always watching. Allah. Every penny that you are bringing in, you will have to answer on the Day of Judgment. And also, you know, we were just speaking about, you know, halal, haram, lawful and unlawful. You know what, another thing that the drug dealers do today of the Hanal Bay? Best car, brand new car. Everyone's looking, they look at the new car. House, everyone's also looking, what a beautiful house, what an amazing house this guy's made. Then, Phone, brand new phone, you know, the best one, the new one that's come out. He's got it, he's pre-ordered it. Everything brand new. But there's something very odd with the drug dealer. What's that thing? That one of the phones that you will have, you will have, it'll be the old, you know, the old the brick phones that used to be back in the 90s, back in your time of then. Those old why, phones. Why my time? Could have been your time, is that? <laughs> they didn't exist at that time. But back in that time, those old, old phones, they'll keep that as well. Now a person thinks to himself, look, brand new car, a brand new home, a brand new everything. But why do you have this brick old phone? The drug dealer will say that, brother, I'm smart. Why am I smart? It's because the police can't track this number. The police can't track this phone. So this is why I've got this phone and the police can't track me down. But remember, like I just mentioned, you can hide from everyone, Allah. but you can't hide from your creator. Allah. Wherever you go, whatever your situation is, you know the thoughts that are going through your mind, Allah is even aware of them thoughts as well. I seen by just moving on with the related to drug dealing, you know, where it leads to this is also a, a, a something for the viewers of Madhini channel, those who are drug dealing to reflect over. Where drug dealing actually leads to, it actually leads to either you taking someone's life. Why? Because someone has robbed your drugs, someone's taken your drugs, You're taking someone's life here. Or then once you've taken someone's life, then the people are always coming back for you. So someone taking your life, this is also a this, part of this. This constant fear that you're living in. That look who's watching. There was one incident, there was this young lad, you know, always with a few few people he had. One day he's walking home alone, they grabbed him, beat him up so much that they killed him on the spot. Allah. And there's many incidents, you know, we wake up in the morning and we find that, that in our city, in our area, there's been a stabbing, there's been a shooting. What is this? Later on, everyone goes to read the Janaza prayer. Then four or five months later when the investigations happen, the parents' head, in other words, is lowered in shame Allah. that this will happen due to drug dealing. 
Imagine first of all, Abdullah al you know, imagine how painful that would be for the parents. First of all, losing the child, burying your own child, and then the news is gone public that this was due to drug use. We've, we've seen that, we've seen people who've come on the parents' funeral and they are coming in handcuffs. Why? Because they've gone in for drug dealings, they've gone in for drugs, and they've, you know, and, and or oh, they've gone into some crime, and they come and they, they, the father's funeral is there, or the mother's funeral is there, and they handcuff together. You know, what, what sort of state this is? And I've seen it, I'm sure you have I've seen, seen this state as well. Not only that, but at times, because they're in prison, they can't even pray the mother or father's janazah. But then now they're coming, coming to the end of this particular program, drugs, it's a very, very evil action of today. And it's so common, unfortunately, like we've mentioned previously as well, every second, third home is affected by drugs. And then the drug dealers who are destroying lives. First of all, the message to the drug addicts, leave this life before it's too late. You know, because it's mentioned that whatever state you will die in, that's what you will be raised on the day of the month. Many people have died in the state of being intoxicated by drugs. Imagine you die whilst taking drugs. Imagine how you will be raised on the day of judgment and those drug dealers especially. You don't want drugs to be sold to your child, to your brother, to your sister, to your mother, to your father. Then just for a bit of money, why are you destroying someone's life? And then you know what might happen up there and We might leave that life. You know, we might go somewhere else. But that drug addict, because of your drugs that you were selling him, uh-huh. he's going to be there for the rest of his life. And um, just finally, I'd just like to mention one point here. Your hand has been put, your hissa, your heart has been put in someone becoming a drug addict. Why? Because you were selling him drugs. Now imagine you pass away. That person you've left behind, your customer, your regular customer, he's going to continue, he's going to find someone else. He's continue, he's going to have this continuous habit of smoking drugs. Who is the guna going to go to? Who is the sin going to go to? You're going to be six feet under and the guna, the sin of that person smoking drugs, then how many people he gets started as well? That's all going to go to you. This is a big message. To the drug dealers after so that. my dear slime brothers and viewers of Madhi Channel, you, you've seen our topic today, drugs and dealing. And these are the topics which we are bringing you in our silsilas, in our episodes, in our programs regarding our issues. So continue to watch these programs, our issues. And inshallah, also by reflecting over these things, it could be that we can build a change in our society. Those who are watching these programs, our issues, and inshallah, through watching this, we could change ourselves. We can help to change our society. So continue watching Madani channel and keep away from drugs, keep away from drug dealing. Save yourself, save your family members from these things, and inshallah, we will be able to save our society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from drugs, protect us from drug dealing, protect our family, our children from mm-hmm. all these problems. Ameen bijahin nabil, Ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Grant me ease, O oh Allah, grant me ease, O oh Allah, grant me ease, the courage and the strength to keep on going and the patience.